Jesus. <laughs> Steph, plus 32, that's incredible. Wow. Hey, Draymond, uh, in the third quarter, um, you know, you ran out the half court, was getting the crowd live. Can you take us through that moment and what you saw down on the Denver bench? Uh, I just saw them arguing. Um, I wasn't sure who was arguing, but somebody's down there arguing. The crowd should notice that. <laughs> and they should be very loud for that. And how it took me a while to get them loud. I was disappointed. I mean, sh shoot. And Didn't coach, Michael. It's good. And how fun was a game like this? I mean, we saw you dancing out the free throw line uh, late in the fourth quarter. Uh, it was very fun. You know, when you, when, when you beat a, a team uh, the way we did the first game, um, they come out and they give you their best punch. And they did that. And, you know, we took the punch on the chin. We responded right away. We got control of the game. Um, pretty much started at ah, maybe the last couple minutes of the first quarter. And I think we had control of the rest of the game. So I think, uh, you know, just to see our group respond the way they did, uh, the way we did, you know, I think that's that's special. You know, you that's a very good team. That's not some slouch pushover team. They have a very good group around an incredible player. And, you know, we took their best punch and we responded. And I thought that was that was great. That, that lineup broke it open again in the same part of the game, late second. Um, what did you like? I mean, we talked yesterday just about kind of the defensive identity you wanted to build. What did you like about that, those six minutes? I thought we swarmed. Uh, you know, I think there were a couple loose balls that we could have come up with that we didn't come up with. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that we spoke about with that lineup is we should be able to get deflections. And when we get deflections, we have to push, you know, push the ball. Um, and try to make them keep up with that pace. And I think, you know, for the most part, we did a pretty good job. Um, you know, I, they got some offensive rebounds, which, you know, that's, that's what you're going up against when, when you do go that small is, is the rebounding. But I thought we did a good job of cleaning that up. But early on, I thought they had too many offensive rebounds. And that was on me. Uh, Joker was getting the offensive rebound. So, um, when battling a big guy like that, it's important that our guards come back in and get the rebound. But but for, it starts with me keeping him off the glass and giving them a chance to come clean up the rebounds. And I didn't do a good job of that early. Um, he was able to get some offensive boards. And what he f finished with five offensive rebounds. I think all five of them might have come in the first half. So uh, if I do a better job there, give our guys an opportunity to clean up the rebounds, um, then I think that lineup gets even more dangerous. Dream, what's it like to be on the ball or even off the ball when you have Steph and Jordan both kind of so, getting their thing? It's pastor's paradise for me. Um, you know, you got Steph and Clay. I mean, Steph and Jordan kind of, <clears throat> they roam differently than Clay. You know, theirs is more just kind of fluid and, you know, you have to keep an eye on them because they're moving all over the place. Clay's a little different. You know, Clay, Clay is going to roam when when it's time for him to get to a spot for a shot. And and so with those two guys, it's a little different than reading with Clay. But nonetheless, you got um, those three guys out there at the same time. For me as a passer, um, that's heaven. And then, you know, the one weak shooter out there around me with that group is Wiggins. <laughs> and I think he shoot like 37% from three or something like that. And I'm live with Wiggins shooting that three. So. For me, as I mean, I can't. You can't ask for anything more on the offensive end. Any more options than than that. Um, so yeah, I like it a lot. What are the things that you observe on the court that signal to you you are demoralizing an opponent? Um, I mean, you just kind of read body language and frustration. Uh, you know, frustration usually shows up in body language. Uh, that's just kind of what I try to read. You, you know, you try to read interactions with with teammates uh, and how someone's reacting to their teammates. And you know, if you feel like you're getting under the skin, you press up a little more. Uh, if you don't feel like you're getting under the skin, you press up a little more. So, just try to do my job, but.
body language. At Draymond, in lieu of Jordan not being part of the finalist list for most improved, do you got your petition ready to go? Yeah, it's coming. It's definitely coming, for sure. Just what was your reaction once you saw the list? I wasn't shocked. Yeah. I wasn't shocked at all. Can you expand a little more on that initial Jesus reaction when you just look down and see Steph's stat line? What did you think of his play tonight? He was incredible. 22 minutes plus 32, that, that's insane. Um, but I, I thought his patience was great. They, they did a great job of trying to take – take the pocket away because we we got the best of them in the pocket that first game and so they did a great job of trying to take that pocket pass away and early on a little bit we struggled with it when Steph came in the game he just he just drove until they stopped him and the big was kind of shaded towards me to take the pocket away so he just kept driving them and I think that broke their defense down And, and once he started doing that um, you know, now you got him into the paint, kicking out and flying back off for threes. That's that's when Steph Curry is at is most dangerous off the ball. And so, um, I thought the way he came in and settled our offense down. I mean, it's what you expect of Steph Curry, but you know, um, I thought that was huge. And you know, like I said, to be plus thirty two in twenty two minutes, twenty three minutes. That's it doesn't get much better than that. You've played with some incredible offensive lineups, you know, Steph, Clay, KD together. But what makes this trio of Jordan, Clay, and Steph so tough for defenders to, to match? Jordan is doing some of the same stuff Steph does, and that's tough. I mean, you know, you're going to game plan for Steph, you're going to game plan for Clay, but, you know, now you got you got a game plan for Jordan, and, and that's – that's a different beast. You know, you, you're, you're trapping Steph. Okay, well, if if you're trapping Steph and you got Jordan on the floor too, it's it's hard to trap two guys. You swing the ball to the second side and, you know, Big's going to get back. and Like, that's tough. And so I think, you know, he's he's been watching Steph a lot. And he's doing his best impression, and it is incredible. We've watched Jordan – play in the six-man role most of the season. We've seen Steph through the last two games. How much does it really matter who's in what role? I mean, it matters. Um, ultimately, you know, we got to have Steph Curry in the lineup. So, you know, that's one thing. We're not trying to keep Steph in the six re- six-man role. Right. Forget that. Right. Now, in saying that, ultimately, Jordan probably going to have to start too. And so that's where, you know, we got to figure a bunch of stuff out. Good problem to have, great problem to have, but it's going to have to get figured out at some point. And maybe you know, down you know, as as thing about the playoffs is every series takes on a life of its own. You know, every series requires different matchups, requires different adjustments. At some point, I'm sure they're both going to be starting together. You know, and you know, but I won't. Um, I won't be the one to cause myself that headache. Steve can figure that one out. <laughs> Draymond, you mentioned the crowd. I mean, you know, it, we all know what the Oracle days were like, when, and it's probably not going to be duplicated. It probably can't be. But what did you think about the crowd? And I saw you not – that one wasn't the only time you were gesturing to it. A couple times you are running down the floor and pointing up to the, to the seats. What did you feel about the energy? I thought people? the energy was pretty good. I thought – I mean, there were times in that game where it felt just like Oracle. There were times where it was, I mean, super loud. Um, you know, and like you said, Oracle, I, <clears throat> as fast as we can, we all got to get rid of the idea of Oracle in our head. That's a very special place. It's a very different place. Um, I mean, even the makeup of the building, like it's, it's going to be louder. You know, and so we kind of all have to remove that thought of our, from our head of that this place is going to be Oracle. It's a totally different place. Uh, but nonetheless, it's a great one, too, and we need to continue to establish it as the best home court in the league. And, and did you happen to notice Joe Lake uh, on the sideline? I think one time you ran right past him. Um, did you see any of his? It's hard not to notice Joe on the sideline, uh, whether you're doing good or bad. It's hard not to notice Joe on the sideline. Would you call your back 
hundred percent right now. And when you're kind of going through the rehab, is this what you're envisioning as far as the start of the playoffs and your performance goes? Oh uh, yeah, I feel incredible. Uh, and this was definitely um, the way I hoped it would happen. I was hoping that you know, over and we're coming back with, with a month left in the season, um, that I could round into playoff form. And I feel pretty good. You know, I feel, um, you know, great. I mean, my conditioning is, is getting there. I got tired a couple times a night, but I also got like 285 pounds laying on me. So that's, you know, that's a different, uh, that's a different beast. But nonetheless, I, I feel great. And, you know, I'm past the injury. Um, you know, that's the thing of the past. You know, just got to continue to do what I do, continue to bring the force and energy that I bring to the game, but I feel fine, and the energy is behind me. And you're the last person that needs any extra motivation, but kind of seeing the DPOI voting kind of, is this a little bit of an extra statement? I'm as extremely far as happy for Marcus Smart. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that's, that's a guy who I respect as a defender, so I'm, I'm extremely happy for him. Well-deserved, um, you know, with where that team's defense went, it changed their season, and he's right in the middle of all of that. So I got no complaints. Uh, I do have some complaints, but I'll talk about them on the pod tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's Deez. All right, thank you. we got to get into work.